Good morning. Welcome to the Lynn Cancer Institute updates. What you need to know in 2021. We're very grateful to have you all with us today to learn from our very own oncology clinical dietitian, Marie Miranda. Marie will be educating us on nutrition and breast cancer. At the Lynn Cancer Institute, we truly believe that education, prevention, screening and early detection, and our treatment options with the expertise of our staff and latest technology will truly save lives. Just a few notes before Marie begins, your Zoom will be muted during this presentation. In the interest of time, Marie's bio was sent to you by email. We invite you to please take notes um, because as you are muted, uh, Marie can't see you or hear you. So we ask you to write any questions in either the chat box or the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. Uh, Lee, uh, after the presentation, will send you an evaluation and uh, we ask you to please complete that. Um, now, we are very proud to welcome you to the Lynn Cancer Institute and to introduce Marie Miranda. Hi, Marie. Thank you very much, Jan, and thank you all for attending today. Um, welcome, and um, as Jan mentioned, um, my name is Marie Miranda. I'm the dietitian here. I've been here for 13 years now. Um, today's topic is nutrition and breast cancer, um, eat well and be well. Um, so let's get, go ahead and get started a little bit of an outline. Um, today we're going to talk about lifestyle and breast cancer risk. I'm going to get right into the lifestyle, um, issues, ways to eat right to reduce cancer risk and eating a rainbow. And I actually didn't add it to this slide, but I have a couple of, um, topics from the news that we will discuss. So getting started with lifestyle and breast cancer risk, um, i I'm going to start right off by talking about alcohol. Um, the recommendation is to limit alcohol. Drinking alcohol actually can raise your breast cancer risk. Alcohol increases estrogen and can damage um, cells to our body. So they have found for every 10 gram serving of alcohol um, equals about a 5% increased risk of premenopausal um, breast cancer and about 9% postmenopausal breast cancer, um, and uh, about 12% for ER positive. So that standard serving of um, alcohol is about five ounces of wine, 12 ounce beer, one and a half ounce shot. That is actually a 14 gram alcohol serving. So the 10 gram um, alcohol serving would be slightly less, obviously three and a half ounces of wine, eight and a half ounce beer and one ounce shot. Um, I believe another statistic I have seen recently is that for every serving of alcohol increases breast cancer risk by about 11%. And that might account for the difference in serving size. So certainly the recommendation is to um, avoid alcohol if possible, but limit to less than, <clears throat> sorry, less than one serving per day. Um, if you are going to eat alcohol, I would also suggest one other thing. If you're going to eat alcohol, make sure you get um, a lot of these other healthy um, foods that we're going to talk to, especially foods high in folate, like our green leafy vegetables. This folate um, can uh, counteract, so to speak, some of the damage that alcohol can do as far as B vitamin absorption and concerns with, with um, um uh, damage to the cells, but it's not going to be complete. So certainly limiting the alcohol is the best um, option. Lifestyle and breast cancer risk, um, in being at a healthy weight is um, primary in that lifestyle recommendation. Carrying extra body fat can increase risk of postmenopausal breast cancer. Why? Um, fat stores actually aren't just benign. They don't just sit in our bodies and carry extra weight. They can cause inflammation and insulin resistance, which increases insulin and hormone levels um, in the bloodstream, um, which can promote um, additional cancer risk. 
So even reducing our body weight by just 5% makes a huge impact on, on overall health. So eating right and exercise can help manage our weights. Um, and I'm gonna give a little bit of a plug for a new program that we're starting here. Um, it's called Light to Fight for those people who are um, LCI um, in, uh, patients um, and also finished with radiation or chemotherapy. Um, we are, um, are motivated to lose weight and maintain a healthy BMI. It is going to be an intensive 10 week program in, with individual guidance, counseling regarding nutrition. Um, each participant will receive an indirect calorimetry reading for a precise calculation of their um, energy needs and body composition measurements. So the contact for there is on the screen. If you'd like to contact Brandy Hyatt, she's um, uh, running the program and um, you are you they you will have to commit to that 10 week program by monthly weigh ins and food and exercise journaling. So as I said, it is an intensive program, but it is free to Lynn Cancer Institute breast cancer survivors. So certainly if you're interested, um, let her know. But I think a good mantra is to say that you don't have to eat less, um, but it is important you you just have to eat right and um, let's kind of go over some of those strategies for eating right. Um, certainly for weight management, avoiding sugary drinks and processed foods that have a lot of added salt and table sugar, fructose. Um, these type of foods don't turn off um, our I'm hungry hormones and they keep us wanting more and um, keep us uh, hungry throughout the day. Um, better yet to fill our half of our plate with vegetables at meals, um, eat about two or three fruit servings a day. Um, certainly it's easy to go over that two or three fruit servings. So when it comes to weight management, um, monitoring that serving size is also important. Approximately the size of your fist is a great example or about a cup size. Um, and of course, I always encourage eating that rainbow of colorful foods, which we'll talk about later. Keep to a low fat diet, choosing monounsaturated and omega-3 fats in small quantities. We do have some research in breast cancer survivorship that states that a low fat diet was able to reduce the risk of recurrence. Um, that low fat diet was fairly low, it was about 20% of the calories from fat. So it was pretty restrictive. Um, but it has been shown to be beneficial. Um, and along with uh, eating healthy and eating right is being active. And that certainly on its own can decrease the risk of breast cancer along with helping us manage weight, which also can help us decrease the risk of breast cancer. So being active and exercising helps regulate hormones. Um, some evidence indicates people are active even at um, who are active even after diagnosis can increase survival. Exercise helps manage weight further, decreasing our cancer risk. So the goal would be to start at a minimum of 150 minutes per week, um, which is about 30 minutes, five days a week is, would be a good goal for weight control. Um, if we can work towards that 45 to 60 minutes would be even better. That can be a lofty goal for some of us. So certainly any type of exercise is going to make a difference. You can also break up your day by getting up and walking around a few minutes every hour or um, doing, let's say two 15 or 20 minute workouts, maybe in the morning and then in the evening. Um, so certainly it doesn't have to be all at one time. But being active is very important overall for multiple other health um, concerns. I mean, certainly also good for our bone and bone health as well. So our goal is to start, oops, sorry. Our goal is to start a lifestyle of eating, a way of living, thinking, and managing our health. So certainly you are what you eat. So don't be fast, cheap, easy, 
or fake. And I think that's a good strategy, even when you're thinking about the food choices. So, you know, avoiding fast food, foods that are made um, fried and um, highly processed, cheap foods tend to go along with those fast foods. Um, easy, meaning something is processed or um, uh, easy to prepare um, and fake, which, um, you know, there's a lot of products coming out on the market that are created, so to speak. Um, and I almost feel like they're almost fake foods just because they're a highly processed made up food rather than something that would grow on a farm or come from an animal or, you know, generally be prepared from something um, whole and all natural. So eating right is a healthy eating pattern, um, certainly emphasizes foods that are high in antioxidants, um, high in monounsaturated fats and omega-3 fats, high in fiber. So these are gonna be fruit, vegetables, different types of spices and teas, um, your high fiber, whole grains and beans and legumes, along with those fruits and vegetables. So all of these source foods are a source of phytochemicals. And these are um, vitamins and minerals, and they're active compounds that protect our cells from damage that can lead to cancer. But that means the antioxidants, there are many things in our environment, um, things that we breathe in, um, chemicals in foods, residues in foods that can cause damage to DNA and cells. And you know, our bodies do a pretty good job repairing all of that, but certainly it needs those components from foods to help that function correctly, like folate or like other kind of nutrients in foods. So getting the, um, maintaining that, that supply is important. And then, um, and they can also influence hormone levels, um, detox the body, take those, some of those um, carcinogens or chemicals out of our system before they can do damage um, and help repair that DNA if it does become damaged. So we want these high antioxidant um, uh, foods in our system. So some examples of foods with omega-3 fats, pretty much your fatty fish. So that's the salmon, tuna, mackerel, halibut, um, herring, anchovies, um, sardines. And then you have your plant uh, in tuna. You have your plant base from walnuts, flax seeds, chia seeds, um, and then mayonnaise made with canola oil. So all of these are your good sources of omega-3 fats. As I mentioned, you want um, in, in small amounts, um, for instance, a sprinkling of seeds or um, a controlled portion of your fatty fish um, to, to control the fat level, but these are the fats to include in the diet. And your monounsaturated oils, your olive oil, canola oil, peanut oil, safflower, sesame, avocados and peanuts, and of course, any of those nuts and seeds, along with the omega-3 fats will have those monounsaturated fats. So these are the type of oils to include in the diet. And that healthy eating pattern is also gonna minimize the intake of refined carbohydrates, such as white breads, pastas, or white rices. So generally speaking in the general population, this is the best choices as far as um, um, diet. I mean, certainly if a survivor is having GI issues, then that's a individual concern, but you do wanna replace these types of foods with whole grains, brown rice, um, wild rice, even black rice is nice, quinoa, barley. Barley is a great grain as far as um, fiber and prebiotic for the gut, uh, buckwheat and bulgur wheat, um, eating less protein, eat lean protein sources such as chicken and fish and less red meat and full fat dairy. We'll talk about dairy a little bit more, um, but you definitely want to avoid processed meats as well. So your processed meats is salami, pepperoni, corned beef, um, hot dogs. Um, certainly there are some uncured options out there, but um, there's no evidence that those are significantly better. It certainly is um, less um, uh, nitrates and, and phosphates and things like that than your true processed meats. 
and including Asian mushrooms, uh, shiitake, maitake, reishi, um, but any type of mushroom actually can be very healthy for a person. So that would be part of that healthy eating pattern. As I mentioned, those healthy grains, barley and buckwheat, millet, quinoa, brown rice, farro, bulgur wheat, multigrain products. Um, your serving sizes here, about a half a cup um, or a, a cupped fist. So your hand can be very useful when you're talking about um, serving sizes. So as I mentioned, your fruit size should be no more than your fist. And then the cup fish is what you should be able to um, um, fill with rice or pasta or beans. Um, so your healthy protein, we talked about salmon and, and your fatty fish as far as sources of omega-3s. Eggs, eggs have been a bad rap for a long time. And I believe, um, you know, a, a good, decent eggs, free range eggs or organic or um, Eggland's Best um, are good quality protein sources. There are still a lot of beneficial nutrients in eggs. Um, snacking on, on nuts or throwing a, a small handful of nuts into your salad can be a great way of getting some extra protein into there. Beans and chickpeas and then amami sesame seeds um, in boneless, skinless chicken breasts um, with those the other types of fish also in seafood are good protein sources. So that healthy eating pattern, we want to work in those um, seeds, black seeds, sun, sunflower kernels, walnuts, um, and spicing it up. We have a little bit more on spices, but those spices can add their own level of antioxidants and drinking green tea, as long as you're allowed the green tea up to four cups a day. Um, you wanna take like a pure source of green tea leaves brewed for about a couple minutes um, in about two to four cups per day. And unless, like I said, uh, um, contraindicated by your medications or, or your doctor. And not a lot of press gets or, or talk um, is done about gut health. But we do, you do want to support gut health with high fiber foods and fermented foods with probiotics. The probiotics and prebiotics are our first line of defense for our immune system. And they've actually also been linked with good bone health um, and e maybe even weight management. So including foods like artichokes and mushrooms and onions and asparagus and apples and your beans are good prebiotic foods, high fiber foods to support all of the good bacteria in our gut. And then your fermented foods, um, say like a kombucha or yogurt, um, sauerkraut, um, uh, fermented vegetables will add a, a large, a good variety of probiotics to our system. Certainly you can take a supplement as well, but I would definitely find a supplement with um, a multitude of different strains of bacteria. I believe there is some good research with the lactobacillus strains um, as far as bone health, but we really don't have a good prescription, so to speak, with, with probiotics. So supporting a good variety is our best bet for right now. And as I mentioned, those good spices, turmeric, um, is that certainly talked about a lot in um, breast cancer or cancer in general, and a good thing to kind of include in the diet um, with a little bit of black pepper so you can absorb it better. Um, garlic, basil, rosemary, cloves, ginger, fennel, cardamom, cinnamon, cumin, nutmeg, they all have their own um, types of components to um, as antioxidants to help reduce the risk of cancer and, and support good health. So definitely want to spice it up as far as our um, meals and snacks. So foods to limit, avoid, we've kind of um, touched on some of this, but avoid the processed meats, um, limit added sugars. Um, didn't talk about sugar quite so much yet. Um, your high fructose corn syrup, your sugar, your um, corn, other types of corn syrups, um, any kind of added sugar, which actually is being listed on the labels these days. So it's a, a, a good part of that food label to look at. Um, generally, these are processed sugars and can um, 
you know, spike the blood sugars, increase insulin production, and um, generally kind of um, increase potentially that risk of cancer. So um, limiting those added sugars and focusing if, if and where we need sweetness on a natural sweetener like um, pure honey, pure maple syrup, fruits, fruit juices, something like that um, would be a better option and uh, more nutritionally valid because you get more nutrients from that fruit or honey or pure maple syrup than you're going to get from a processed sugar. So we do want to limit um, those added sugars, certainly limit the added salt. Um, and like I said, the nitrates, the phosphates, the preservatives, the dyes, um, these again, kind of those fake components to foods or those added components that have potential um, carcinogen effects. Um, and certainly moderation is the key. A little bit can be fine, but when abundance um, in our diet, um, anything can certainly be harmful. So some key things to remember. As I mentioned, we talked about eating a rainbow when selecting your meal for the day or thinking about, you should be thinking about that rainbow of foods. And what I mean by rainbow foods is we can divide our fruits and vegetables into different color categories. So your rainbow, your Roy G. Biv, your red, orange, green, um, purple, um, yellow uh, are all kind of um, um, included within that, that rainbow of colors. So red foods are uh, generally cooked tomatoes and cooking the tomatoes offers um, better absorption for the lycopene in the tomato, which is its um, primary antioxidant. Watermelon, red grapefruit, red, or even red bell peppers will give you some lycopene. Purple foods, most of your berries, your eggplant, your beets, prunes, pomegranate, radishes. Um, so certainly you want one of those every single day. Orange foods and yellow foods, your orange being carrots and mangoes and cantaloupe and pumpkin and winter squashes and sweet potatoes. Um, but, and then your yellow foods, more of your citrus category of food, oranges and kiwi and tangerines and peaches, papaya, pineapples, pears, orange, orange, orange juices. And then we have two green categories, your leafy greens, like, you know, salad greens and spinach, but avocado falls into that category. Honeydew melon falls into that category, asparagus. So I'm not a big salad person. There's certainly plenty of other foods to choose. And then um, your cruciferous vegetable category which are other green cabbage and broccoli and Brussels sprouts and cauliflower. Um, and certainly in the realm of breast cancer research, those types of foods have specific nutrients that may weaken the effect of estrogen in the body, um, form a different type, um, you know, encourage a different type of estrogen production. So that would certainly be a, an important um, food to include in the diet um, and certainly something to choose every single day. Obviously, you don't have to have broccoli every day, um, but something from that family of food. And then our white, so to speak, in, in this rainbow of eating is actually that onion and garlic um, mushroom category. Um, ginger is in there, um, you know, the jicama, which is also a, a good prebiotic for our guts. Um, and parsnips and potatoes. So we do get a lot of good important nutrients from those foods as well. And ginger being good for our stomach and garlic being good for blood pressure and our hearts as well. So should um, be included throughout the day. So kind of the goal, um, the way I like to look at it is if you can go through your day and get some kind of food from each of these color um, categories, then you not only have your quantity of fruits and vegetables, but you also have that variety. I think it's a nice way of tweaking. So for instance, um, um, if we're going along and having breakfast, like a pumpkin spiced oatmeal with cinnamon and ginger, walnuts made with almond milk and uh, a clementine on the side, Let's say lunch, we had a Caesar salad wrap with roasted chicken um, using a whole grain wrap. One of my favorites is actually a wrap that you can get 
in the burrito section with it, um, it says it's an extreme wellness. So it's very high fiber, low carb, um, added seeds, I believe in good healthy fats. So that's a nice option. Um, using a, a low fat Caesar vinaigrette or um, there's actually Healthy Choice has one of their cauliflower based um, uh, salad dressings in Caesar and that's a pretty good dressing as well. A cup of butternut squash soup, um, some watermelon is a nice lunch, um, salsa and chips for a snack and then your salmon and brown rice and broccoli, a little bit of berries with some yogurt as a snack as well. And you can see how that kind of all falls into the different color categories. Red, watermelon for our red, blueberries for our purple. We actually did pumpkin and butternut squash for our orange, clementine for the yellow, um, the romaine lettuce um, for a leafy green and broccoli um, for that Christopher's vegetable and then garlic. So it's kind of an, um, just a nice way of focusing on what we should be eating rather than I can never eat this, I can't eat that, I can't eat that. So I think it's a, a, a nice little um, uh, practice um, and uh, tracking to do as far as eating that rainbow. Um, so I wanna move on um, briefly to topics that are in the news. And I've gotten quite a few questions about a study that came out in the news about peanut butter. So the headline was peanut butter can increase the risk of, of metastatic cancer. So this study that came out was called um, the appearance of peanut agglutinin. Sorry if I messed that up completely. In the blood circulation after peanut ingestion promotes endothelial secretion of metastatic metastasis promoting cytokines okay so this was one thing um you know the, the first concern i have um when i was looking into this study and um is and uh this also comes through the american institute for cancer research um comments about um this study so this is not just from me um it, first and foremost is a cell study which shouldn't um, be used to jump to full dietary recommendations. So a cell study is meant to be a mechanism type of study, a study that looks at how things work, so to speak, and what happens. Um, certainly not anything in the full complexity of a human body um, where things are, are, are gonna be processed and, and uh, handled differently. So that's the first concern with this with the study. The peanut agglutinin makes up 0.15% uh, of peanuts by weight. The amount used in the experiment was approximately half a pound of peanuts, which would have to be eaten all at once as the levels only last for about an hour after being ingested. So um, certainly that's a very large amount and let, not likely to be a common um, amount of peanuts eaten. Um, and then we have to remember that if food is composed of thousands of different nutrients and compounds. So um, we have to remember that even in prior research and, and studies about peanuts, we know that um, peanuts are a good source of resveratrol, which is that ever important antioxidant that we get even from uh, grapes and wine. Arginine, um, both can affect uh, pathways that actually reduce cancer risk. And in other studies, we know through large population studies um, that people who eat the most peanuts have lower mortality rates. They have lower risk of dying. We know that nuts is, is associated with better health. So even though it's interesting research and something that certainly um, can add to the pool of research and figuring out mechanisms and different nutrients in foods, I don't think it's something that should be directing people's um, dietary choices at this point in time or um, any true strong evidence that peanuts would be bad for breast cancer survivor. Um, so, you know, that's my response and American Institute of Cancer Re Research's response to the peanut question. Now, back in 2020, 
a study made headlines suggesting milk intake increases the risk of breast cancer. And certainly milk can be a mixed bag when it comes to research. Um, for the American Institute of Cancer Research, um, and American, cancer of in, cancer Re American Institute of Cancer Research does a comprehensive analysis of all of the global evidence when it comes to cancer and nutrition and exercise. Um, so they keep that comprehensive pool and they update that through their continuous update project, um, you know, every so many years with the new evidence and new recommendations. There is no solid evidence linking dairy or dairy milk to breast cancer at this point in time. For other cancers like colorectal cancer, um, milk has actually been found to be protective. For prostate um, cancer, milk may actually increase the risk. So certainly, like I said, milk can be a mixed bag um, when it comes to um, cancer risk. This study um, was among seven day Adventists, um, which found no association um, with soy and breast cancer, which was quite interesting. In fact, they had a lower risk with um, soy intake. Uh, there was no clear link with cheese and yogurt um, and breast cancer, but they did find that increased risk with high intakes of milk itself. Um, but even per the author, um, dairy constituents could hypothetically cause both beneficial e effects from conjugated linoleic acid, lactoferon, or harmful effects from the sex hormones and the dairy protein mediated um, increase in insulin growth factor. So studies of dairy intake have reported both protective uh, effects, no effects, or hazardous effects associated with breast cancer. So certainly something that still is being researched and looked at. And um, we've always suggested that um, low fat or fat free dairy, um, but the option there for drinking um, almond milk or plant based milk. Um, and actually, honestly, even soy milk, because we have found that soy is 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 safe for hormone receptive breast cancer survivors. And as this study even suggested, may even lower the risk of, of cancer. So that would be an option as well. So I think it's something to consider and keep an eye on. Um, and remember that they didn't find any link with cheese and yogurt. So those would still be options. I think um, you could probably put kefir into that category of yogurt since it's also a fermented milk like yogurt is. Um, so, you know, these are things that um, still need investigation in, um, in, the new, in the research. For breast cancer survivors who exercise may live longer, um, a study suggests, so that was another um, recent headline. Um, so survivors who do regular exercise before and or after cancer treatments may live longer and decrease their risk of recurrence. And there actually is really strong evidence as far as the benefits of exercise for um, cancer survivors in general and breast cancer survivors. So even survivors in this study that didn't exercise before they were diagnosed um, received a modest um, benefit or received a benefit from modest amounts of exercise. So any exercise provides some benefit. And like I said, start where you can. Um, at the level that you can and work up to that goal of 150 minutes of moderate exercise a day. Um, so certainly to reduce the risk of, of breast cancer from lifestyle changes, our aim is to move more, weigh less, and eat well. Um, I believe that is our way of eating well and being well. So I know I go in through quickly. Um, so we have plenty of time for questions. And I believe I have two questions here already to look at. So how long does the increased risk of from cancer last? If forever, then less than 10 servings over time would have 100% chance of recovery. So the, what the studies do is they look at 
how much alcohol a person eats on a daily basis and then correlated to a risk of breast cancer. So what these studies do is they do like a diet recall or a food questionnaire and they say, how much does a person drink? And then they follow those people for however many years, seven years, 10 years, something like that. And they, um, and they, from the whole study population, how many of those people had, and you know, what was the percentage of increased risk for them to develop breast cancer? So no, you're not going to add it up like that per se. Um, so for, for people who drank more than um, a, one drink a day, so more than seven or eight drinks per week, equated to a certain amount of increased breast cancer risk. For those who, who um, let's say, drank 14 to 15 drinks per week, you'll have another percentage. Um, so it's basically like averages. I, hopefully that answers that question. Um, and the Q and A. So is eating small amounts of regular cheese that is full fat better than eating vegan cheese? And that's a really great question because um, vegan cheese, I, I do find to be slightly processed. Um, you know, the, the benefit of the vegan cheese is certainly the, the lower fat content. Um, that's a really good question because I know that the saturated fats from the regular cheese, that high, that full fat variety um, is associated with um, more cancer risk. So um, maybe I would pick a part skim or a one or 2% regular cheese um, and go with that. Or if there are recipes out there for making say like the cashew milk, cashew cheeses, something a little bit more natural than the processed vegan cheese. Is there any source of soy that should be avoided? Um, not necessarily. Generally speaking, Americans don't eat a lot of soy, um, to be honest with you. I do encourage your whole soy foods rather than the highly processed. Um, so it would be better choices to do tofu or edamame or soy milk versus um, a high intake of soy protein concentrate created foods. So for instance, the Impossible Burger, I was just recently looking at the label for, for a, another discussion that we were having. And that's first ingredient is soy protein um, concentrate and is quite a kind of a processed and created food. And the other interesting thing about interesting thing about the Impossible Burger was it had well over two thousand percent of thiamine for one reason or another I couldn't figure out. But um, so I would I would still focus on your whole soy foods like anything else you want whole foods natural foods as close to nature as possible rather than a processed. Um, has more breast cancer been detected since the COVID? vaccination started, I don't think I can answer that question. Um, I think that would have been for last week's presentations with the doctors. Um, sorry. Um, is there any food or drinks that you recommend to prevent breast or ovarian cancer? Um, there's probably no one food or drink that would prevent breast cancer. You look at a lifestyle or a way of eating, so an eating pattern, so to speak. So all of that accumulation of nutrients that you get from that variety. So for instance, that eating a rainbow, um, the cumulative effect of all of those different foods support our body and a healthy body versus just, um, you know, you, you, can't, you can't rely and say, oh, well, I eat, broccoli or eat Brussels sprouts, so I'm healthy. But I'm also eating hamburgers and French fries and, oh, maybe I'll do sweet potato fries and milkshakes and, and other type and processed food snacks and chips. Um, but I eat broccoli, so I'm healthy. So it, it doesn't quite work like that. You want a, a, a true lifestyle and a way of, um, you know, if you look at your plate of food, 
and you're filling your plate of food up. Now, half of that plate of food should actually be filled with vegetables. And a quarter of that plate of food should be your lean protein. And a quarter of that plate would be your whole grain or your starchy vegetable. In that sense, if you eat a plate of food like that, um, all of your meals every day, then you know that's what we talk about as far as being a plant-based diet and extreme. Uh, where do you buy the extreme wellness reps? I actually find that in Walmart, Supercenter and Publix. Um, in Walmart, I believe they're in the bread aisle and they have two different sizes. In Publix, I believe they're also, they're either in the bread aisle or where the reps are in the produce section. Does wine or alcohol in general affect breast so any type of alcohol will so the recommendation the the comment is it's not the type of alcohol it's the amount of alcohol so any type of alcohol will increase the risk of breast cancer at a high at at, at depending on the quantity so as i mentioned when you start getting over that you know um one serving per day every day um amount um that you drink then you in, you can increase that risk of breast cancer anywhere from what was it seven to eleven percent about eleven percent caffeine i haven't seen as much of a um correlation between caffeine and breast cancer certainly caffeine is a concern as far as heart and and other and other concerns but not as much with breast cancer um, green tea and coffee and everything, I think would still be fine. I'm taking tamoxifen. Next question was I'm taking tamoxifen and I'm feeling fatigue. Um, I have cut out red meats and limit dairy. Are there foods that can provide me with the right or better nutrients to increase energy? I would certainly, um, since you've cut out those proteins, I would be replacing them with some other type of protein. So um, you might start with those fatty fish. Um, also, maybe the beans or chickpeas or lentils or, um, or some other kind of maybe plant-based protein drink, um, you know, something along those lines to get um, that those proteins. Um, one of the new uh, amino acids and protein foods, L-carnitine has been shown to be helpful with um, um, helping with cancer-related fatigue. Iron, and you know, and certainly you want to address any kind of anemia that a person has and that's a big factor with fatigue so if prior treatments um cause anemia the doctor should be addressing that but not an all anemia is necessarily related to iron so you would want to um um your doctors to work up the anemia itself if you have it they can do an iron level folate level b12 level things like that and then if you are low then you would replace it but adding more iron into a system that already has enough iron won't necessarily help per se. Um, so, you know, can work with the doctor as far as the anemia factor, um, the L-carnitine, uh, fish oil, um, sometimes if fatigue is related, related to inflammation, um, the fish oil supplements can help or ginseng um, that, that may help as well but certainly making sure a person is, is eating right and exercise. Exercise is actually probably the most effective intervention for fatigue. Um, and if you start off at that low level, you know, 15, 20 minute bike ride or walk or something and work your way up, um, building that muscle and getting your heart um, circulation going can help with the fatigue. Um, the next question are um, lots of avocados good for us. So avocados itself is a healthy fat. Um, but if you're wanting to manage weight, then the avocados can build up calories quickly. So again, you would want small quantity sprinkling, so to speak, in a salad or with an egg omelet or something like that. And try not to sit down and eat a whole avocado at a time, which can be difficult, obviously, because avocados can turn pretty quick. So share it or you know wrap it up in a good tight um bag or something like that but 
watch your quantity, but avocados themselves have um, a good source of monounsaturated fats. Um, also best type of bread or crackers for us to eat. So um, multigrain, certainly whole wheat when it comes to bread or crackers. Um, I, I, I do kind of like the idea of Ezekiel bread as far as a whole grain bread, or I believe they have English muffins also. Um, Ezekiel bread is a sprouted um, grain bread. It's uh, found in the freezer section. So it's much less processed um, and more natural. So that would be a good idea. Wasa crackers and Saint something to Fleurs is another brand. <laughs> is in the same section of Publix where the Wasa crackers are. But they're generally like a multi-grain um, uh, types of crackers. And obviously you put your hummus or your peanut butter or your cheese or whatever with it and, and enjoy for a... Um, and is the name on, of the wraps Extreme Wellness? Yes. Uh, next question, where to get the best green tea leaves? Um, I used to be able to find a Japanese green tea in, I believe it was Publix or um, Walmart. I have not seen it recently. Um, so you may actually wanna research that um, on, on, your, on your own. Goodness, I'm sorry. I'm, what is best for fatigue? Um, for fatigue, we talked about uh, good quality protein intake. So if you're avoiding the red meats, then find your fish, your salmon, beans, lentils, your chicken, um, the L-carnitine that we're gonna get from those high protein foods and um, the fish oil itself, which you can take as a supplement if you're not big on fish, may help reduce inflammation that can contribute to fatigue. But exercise is your best bet. And um, there's been a little bit of evidence with ginseng as far as helping with, with fatigue. Um, does caffeine encourage fibrous breast? What can cause risk for breast cancer? Okay. Um, so did I miss? Um, is there anything was yeah, there was part one part of a question. Um, the one that originally asked about extreme wellness wraps, she said also peanut research and soy research, each very contra contradictory. Is some soy, um, for example, edamame, okay? Yes, yes. The recommendation when it comes to soy intake is, um, but one to two servings per day is still safe. And um, I believe that's at a mummy serving would be half a cup, I think. I'm gonna double check that one. Um, so, um, a, you know, a moderate intake of soy every day is still safe. And like I said, choose the whole soy foods like an edamame or tofu or soy milk or um, soy nuts or something like that. When it comes to the peanut research, honestly, I think there's only that one study that I have found when I started searching that peanut question um, out there when it comes to peanuts. So you have that, that one study at one location. But as I mentioned in the um, earlier, that's a, a cell study, a Petri dish type of um, study, not anything as far as population, looking at you know, what people eat and their risk of cancer, um, not a, even an animal or, or um, human study. So it's really kind of, you know, hard to pull a recommendation out of that type of study. So I believe there's still benefits to eating peanuts. There's still good nutrient value in peanuts. And like I said, we still have research that says that people who eat nuts um, regularly have a reduced risk of dying. So um, 
I'm currently not that concerned with peanuts. We'll just kind of see what happens with more research. And we have kind of more and more um, uh, research develop, um, coming out that soy is, um, intake is safe and may even reduce your risk of, of um, dying or other health concerns. Marie, there was another question in the chat box. Can you see it? Okay. It starts with the peanut butter issue, which you just did. Um, then she said, what about tofu? But I tofu. think you've covered yeah, that. Yeah, I see it. Tofu is, yeah, that would be considered a whole soy food. Uh, is drinking plain espresso bad? No. And what about whey protein? Um, as far as I've seen, whey protein is a, a good source of protein um, that it would not. The peanut protein that they were looking at in the study was such a small percentage of the weight of that protein and whey protein tends to be. So I, I wouldn't worry about it at this point in time. I mean, certainly if you want to do a plant-based um, protein source, that is just as good of an option. But if you're, if you're using whey protein right now, I wouldn't be that concerned. And one more question in the Q&A. How many eggs per week do you recommend? Um, so American Heart Association recommends three eggs a week if you've had a cardiac event. Um, if you haven't had a cardiac event, they suggest um, one egg per day um, as a recommendation. Um, as far as cancer risk, um, I don't think we have any general recommendations when it comes to eggs. And um, so you can stick with that type of, um, and that's whole eggs with the egg yolk. So if you did an egg and an egg white, but if you're doing egg white omelets, if you're doing eggs, again, um, my only comment with the eggs would be to go ahead and, and take the extra time to, or the extra few cents and buy a organic egg, um, which are pretty readily available these days. And you know, for sure, there's no hormones and um, um, added, uh, you know, the, the pesticide and the residue and stuff um, from the animals and stuff with in, in that, or a free range egg or the egg lens best omega three eggs. And generally speaking, I wouldn't worry after that. Is organic brown turkey okay? Yes. Yeah, lots of good questions, lots of great answers. Is that it for everybody? Oh, what about turkey bacon? Turkey bacon. <laughs> so bacon itself, I mean, turkey bacon is a better option um, than regular bacon because it is lower fat and actually you get more protein from a turkey bacon. Um, but the curing process can still happen with a turkey bacon. So I... I generally, when I am buying a turkey bacon, will pick up an uncured turkey bacon, um, which um, doesn't have the phosphates and nitrates added. So that is a, a good option. And there's a couple of different brands out there. Walmart actually has a generic brand, but you've got Apple, Applegate Farms, which is probably the most common, I believe. Is it Maverick or one another um, brand will have an uncured turkey bacon or, or even uncured bacons, if you don't really care about the turkey part. Um, but the uncured part kind of removes a lot of those preservatives and additives. That is a concern. Okay, thank you, Marie. That was so well, thank much. Thank you everybody for joining us today. And I appreciate being able to speak with you. Yeah, Thanks, Jen. we appreciate all the amazing, amazing education. And it's a lot to um, take in. I was trying to take notes too. So just so you know, all of our presentations are recorded. 
So in a couple of days, when Lee sends you an evaluation, she'll also include a link that um, you can go to our website to see any to see this lecture and any of our past lectures. And uh, we really encourage you to complete our evaluation because that gives us the opportunity to get your name, put you on our email list. And also if you have any suggestions, we appreciate that too. And uh, now I'd like to just tell you what we have in store for you during the month of November. Marie will come back on November 10th, which is a Wednesday, and she'll speak on nutrition and the holidays. On November 17th, which is also a Wednesday, we're going to have our social worker, Sabrina Sprott, and another very uh, interesting topic and one that actually came up a few times today. Her topic will be understanding and living with cancer-related fatigue. So I know that will be a good one. And then on Friday, November 19th, we'll have our lecture series with our physicians, updates and screening, early detection and treatment options for lung cancer. And we will have doctors Jonathan Stern, John Roberts, Samuel Richter, and Matt and Matthew on that presentation. So thank you all for joining us today. And thank you, Marie. And We'll see you Hi, in November. Everybody have a nice day. Bye-bye.